children here. Now they come and they tell us, well, let me ask you, are you surprised our children are not learning? Let me ask you this. If you drop your children off at your neighborhood school and was paying $1,000, would you travel all the way down into someone else's community and educate those children better than what you're paying $1,000 to have your children educated for? I don't think so. Because common sense tell me, say that $1,000 and bring your children with you. But if you're leaving your children back here and you going in, I think you're up for something. That's what I think. And I think that too many teachers have allowed their colleagues to be around them and not make them feel uncomfortable. Let them feel that you can get away with that. Okay? Because every time I hear somebody say, these children are animals, I say, send them to Columbine. They don't like that. But I mean, if you want to send them that, if you, animals are already in Columbine. It's important that we begin to show our children and demonstrate for our children the truth and attempt to explain to them what they're facing. Because all of this that we're experiencing is an illusion. There is but one race. If I could say it like this, if I could put it on a chart, this is what I'd like to do. I would like to, and this is how I do it with children. I'd like to, and maybe this is greater mental power for you because it's going to make you imagine this, imagine this in your mind since you can't see it visually. But what I'd like you to imagine is that the whole human family, I'm going to make an analogy to a name. And I'm going to call this, your last name is your family name. Would you agree with that? Your last name is your collective family name. Everybody in your family is named your last name. For the most part, we understand what we're talking about. If that were true, then I would say that that, was, that last name is what race is. Race is the last name. There is only one last name per family, let's just say. So if there's only one last name, there's only one thing that everybody in the family can be called, and that would be the last name. In the human family, that would be called African. Because everybody is an African. That is the one thing that each and every human being is on this planet, is an African. If they were to fast, like you can fast forward, if you were to fast backwards your genealogy and your generation, you would find yourself, everybody, whether you're Japanese or Chinese, Swedish or, or Norwegian, whether you're any of the Native American nations or Hawaiian, you would find your ancestors on the, on the continent of Africa. If you were to continue back in time, you would find yourself in the Great Lakes region known as Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. All life started at the foothills of the mountains of the moon. Now let's look at the first name. Because the first name differentiates a family member for the first time from the other members of the family. Joe Jones, James Jones, Helen Jones, or one down the right. If you were to look at this as an as, as a anthropologist, it would not be race, but your first name would be your ethnicity, your ethnic stuff. So out of the African, there mutated an ethnic stuff. So out of race came ethnicity. And if you were to look deeper at it, this ethnicity would have broken, as Dr. Diop teaches us, between the southern cradle and the northern cradle. The southern cradle being the African, the dark complexion world, and the northern cradle being the European or the depigmented world. The African that had depigmented itself. Still the same African, but because of the nature of the ice age, because of the coldness of the west, because of the putting on of the clothes and the denial of the human body, the skin to the sun, this human to survive began to depigment him or herself. And this African depigmented itself into what Dr. Diaz calls a Eurasian. However, when the ice mountains and the ice age ended and the interstellar occurred, approximately 2,000 to 4,000 years before the Christian era. Not a long time now. Europeans are no older than 10,000 years old. Chinese, Japanese, no older than 6,000 years old. The Japanese were formed when Ethiopians brought South Koreans onto that island. And they mixed with the Ainu people who were the short statured Twa people, derogatorily called pygmies. That's why the Japanese don't want to talk to you about it. They always say that's a mysterious people. See, when we get black, we get mysterious. <laughs> we can't really define who these people were. You really don't want to define them. So 
even the Japanese that we look at today are a people formed between the Africans and the South Koreans and the Ainu people. When this ice age ended and African Eurasians crossed back over into the southern land, they mingled with the people they met, and that is what started the road to culture. That is culture. And culture can be defined by your environmental boundaries where you were born. And the reason why that is is because when you're dealing with land, you're dealing with space, you're dealing with geography. When you are dealing with the when you're dealing with the individual himself, you're dealing with the time and the history they were born. So that your geographical area being born, whether it be Puerto Rico, Republica Dominicana, Jamaica, North Carolina, or South Carolina. That may be part of a larger culture, but you're still an African. In Puerto Rico, you are Puerto Rican. In the Dominican Republic, you are uh, you are Dominican. In Jamaica, you are Jamaican. You are still African, but you are of your environment. That is why the language you speak may be different. The food you eat might be different. However, when you come up and you are with people and you look at each other, you know that you're one with those people and the only thing that separates you are those little things that develop your culture but you're still African no matter what you are Japanese you're still African but your environment created a situation that you reacted to therefore that created your culture that culture would have been a mixture of the African and the Eurasian that could be in a name your middle initial and then comes your nickname. Your nickname now becomes what is considered to be your custom, which is religion. This is why I caution us. You, we have to be careful when we categorize people because to identify someone through their religion, you cannot do that. Religion is not a culture. Never was, never will be. Sammy Davis Jr. was born Christian. He died Jew. Muhammad Ali was born Christian but he shall transcend, I hope in 50 years, as a Muslim. If you can change what you are, it can't be your culture. It's a learned pattern of behavior. However, when people can create an illusion and have you buy into it, that illusion, although illusion, is your reality. And that's what's driving most of us stark raving mad. Because we know what we should know, but we're experiencing a world unlike that. It's like trying to be natural in an unnatural world. It's going to drive you crazy. My mother used to always say, don't argue with someone who is insane. Because the only road to go is you going insane. You're not going to make them sane. So when we're dealing with individuals and you're, you're looking at their face and you know they're not comprehending what you're saying, they're not appreciating what you're saying, then you can see the difference. And then you have to act accordingly. And what J.A. Rogers attempted to, to help us to do is to understand this plan. And he was attempting to break up the family in terms of its cultures, its ethnicities, and all of the other pieces. And he did this in a rather powerful way. And what I'd like to do is talk about some of the highlights of these books because, again, we're going to do this in three parts. But also, in doing this in three parts, there's no way I can cover these books. These books are enormous encyclopedias. I encourage you to make these a part of your home, to, to understand who we are as a people. The patron saint, the patron saint of Germany, Saint Maurice, the pictures that are in these books of all of these African people that were worshipped. You see, white supremacy created an illusion, and this, that, this has not been around a long time. About 1820 was when it really kicked in, because they saw the industry behind what was happening, and they saw the power that they were losing. No one will even tell you that one of the greatest, not only in terms of the Native American people, we must give them credit for the formation of the Constitution, but one of the greatest developers of the American Constitution, who President Clinton signed in a speech where the Moors of America had a direct impact on helping and in fact Morocco was the first nation to accept the United States as a sovereign nation. 